Welcome back, everybody. Taking a look at women in uh, production side of uh, whether it be entertainment, broadcasting, uh, any form of production is what we're focusing in on this morning. And some questions coming in from viewers, which we're hoping to just get across to the panel with you, Peter. And I think this one can be uh, directed to the Deputy Minister in the department and also the NFVF as well. Uh, basically, the questions coming in are regarding training. That is a big issue. And I think that the question that they're wanting to find an answer to is what kind of training is there available for the development of, uh, of young girls, particularly with reference to rural villages? I mean, these are uh, perhaps some of our greatest talents that have been unfounded out in these uh, outlying areas where they have no access to anything of this form. So training, development for young girls across South Africa, what is available? That's just one of the questions we thought we'd pass on to you. Peter, it's back to you. Okay, Leanne, thank you very much indeed. Our audience here wasn't quite able to hear you, but I know that everybody at home heard you uh, talking about funding and training as uh, another big issue. So um, before we go to the floor, maybe it's something that uh, we can address, uh, DM and also uh, a chairperson. Uh, funding we've, we've kind of spoken about already, but training specifically seems to be something that's uh, quite important. How do we empower our women uh, to do those jobs and to take those roles uh, that go beyond the, no the, the usual uh, uh, suspect jobs. Earlier on, Peter, if you recall, in my presentation, I mentioned the fact that we have tried in partnerships with MI City CETA and other stakeholders to say, let's send a group of students to school. I said majority of the 150, I think we've got about 80 who, which are young women, and that seeks to address this challenge that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But going back to the issue of funding, as Usut Mabato was talking here, when we say we fund up to a particular level, that does not mean we're enhancing what women must do in the film industry. Through the presidential testimony, creative industry, we said let's review these funding policies and the criteria because they are not empowering the women. They are forced to go out and hire students. They do not own the students. Therefore, we said our broadcasters have to come to a point whereby they say, if we commission you, you are going to make sure that the students that you utilize belong to the women. And we urge all women not to just go there and be front of mm -hmm. people behind the companies. We are trying to say at policy level as government, we are going to make interventions and definitely we're going to do something in terms of skills. We are working with the citizens, there is enough funding for scaling, but if women can organize themselves, knock at our doors to say we're a group of women, of course they have to be skilled in different areas of the industry because we can't have an influx in the same skills. We will be there to say, let's hold each other's hand so that we're able to move South Africa forward. Okay, do you want to add to that? Um, with NVF, we've got 64 bazaaris per annum that we're funding, and 60% of those are from young women. And we fund 100% in all films in schools, including funding for international uh, studies if the skills that the people are going to attend to is not at home, like animation and all these other uh, uh, film things. So we, we do uh, fund, and in house, we also have training where we do train for script writing. For those that want to sharpen, we do have the in-house training that we're training. And in partnership with also CETA, we have internships where we expose the, 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 the young people who have been trained to other companies that, that are doing films. So I think that we, we are supporting okay. that. Yeah. All right, so uh, contacting uh, the NFVF is a good starting point as well. And uh, the Department of Communications and I suppose working with arts and culture is also another area that they can uh, filter through to. Okay, all right, let's go to our studios now, I mean to the floor now, and start at number, table number 12 where we'll find uh, Namako Masi. Table number 12, if you could stand up and uh, let's hear your question. Um, hello, hello everyone. Um, I'm also a recipient of uh, NVF funding. Um, so I'm very grateful for them because they funded me to make a film commemorating the woman of 1956. And the nice thing is that I'm from the Eastern Cape for them to trust me because I work from the Eastern Cape. But how can we ensure that young girls at a high school level or even primary level are exposed to what I do because it does create employment. But I had wished that I had known about it 
sooner in my life because I only was exposed to media in, at university. But I know that if a young girl is exposed to it at a very early age, they're able to, to dream and actually explore the avenues at a much All sooner. Right. Whilst you've got the microphone in your hand, let me ask you, what, what, what interventions would you have liked to have seen? Well, that might help them, actually. Uh, well, I think they, they, they started because the films that we made uh, celebrating um, 60 years of the Women's March, we actually did a road show, and uh, we, they actually booked Stir Kinico and they brought uh, school kids mm. to come and watch the films. Um, so I think they've actually started, but I think we need more of that way. The, because the nice thing about it is that when, when NAVF commissions you, you own the film, mm -hmm. which really empowers us as filmmakers. Did, did so the young girls get to see you as the filmmaker? Yes, yes. We traveled with NAVF. Yeah. We went to Rustenburg. Uh, yesterday we were in Kimberley, um, Kronstadt. So, and it just really opened their eyes when they saw me and then they saw the film. So I think we need more of those for young right. girls. They, so, and they came in their school uniforms yeah. with their teachers. So, they so I'm, I'm, from the, I'm from the Eastern Cape. <laughs> just to see that, I'd like to see more of that in the Eastern Cape in the rural areas so that right. young girls are exposed to what I do at an earlier age. Okay, so rural areas in particular, that's another good point that's been raised. Uh, let's go to Caroline. So you can comment on uh, all these uh, speakers just now. Caroline's on table number one. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, which advice can you give to the women in the film industry or those that are aspiring to be in the film industry to ensure that they empower one another, they remain united like those women of 1956 who carried each other's burdens and marched uh, gracefully to the union building. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Caroline. Uh, Zoe is on table number nine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm from an organization uh, called Women in Film and Television South Africa. It's very new. It was founded at uh, the Durban Film Festival and we're now in Joburg, Cape Town and Durban. But what I want to find out from um, our panelists is what sort of partnerships can we engage with you? Because um, we're, we're, I mean, I'm so excited to hear that uh, this is what the mandates that you already have. But how can we partner with you for us to be able to, to fast track the process and ex we're growing already very rapidly. It's been two months, but you know, w there's so much need and so much demand, and would need, um, you know, much bigger resources. Mm -hmm. And you guys already have established those sort of things. So how can right. we partner with you? What are the different ways we can partner with you, in order okay. to, to to touch many more women? All right. Let me ask you: When you formed your organisation, what did you have in mind? What are you trying to do? Um, so basically, how it it, it 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 came about quite impromptu after the Durban Film Festival, all the women who had something to to say like to communicate with women sort of met and it kind of turned into you know everyone sharing their experiences and we said that we definitely don't want it to become like a complaint session we want it to be a solution making um, um, organization and so we structured it I don't want to give you a long spiel because you yeah. told us not to but we structured it into um, actually mentorship and um, mentorship and partnering young women with people who are already experienced mm. um, creating a database which already exists where people can quickly okay. access because um, um, a lot of people said they didn't know where to find a female deal P right. or female director so this database is particularly for that and then sisterhood cinema which will be flighting female films and it's it's just all very exciting but those are like the main three pillars that we are working on okay. currently and yeah. I suppose that kind of um, helps answer Caroline's question a little bit about empowering each other but thank you very much indeed should we should we comment on those uh, three points that have been raised and questions um, I'll start with you, uh, DM, and you can just pick any of the, of the issues that you would like to tackle. Actually, Peter, from our side as the Department of Communications, we encourage women to work together, as I said earlier. We always emphasize the fact that women must not see each other as competitors. They must always at all times seek to complement each other, because that's only when they will be able to win the fight against all this that they're going through in the industry. But secondly, how can we partner, how can we assist? That was one of the questions. 
we exist to tell stories in the different platforms of the Department of Communications. Therefore, what is important is that when you are making your own story wherever you are, let it be told so that you can share it with other people. These platforms that we have here, the social media, because one of the things where we are weak at in this film production, especially by the women, is the marketing. That's why we'll talk of limited numbers in terms of consumption for viewers to, to see the, the movie and all that. But we are saying, let's go wild on marketing and our platforms, ACBC, the radio stations, commercial and community radio stations, they play a crucial role in that. As I'm talking about social media, it tells you that you're entering into the digital space. What does it mean that I have produced a film, but SABC or Mnet or whoever else that is a broadcaster has not commissioned my film? Does it mean I'm not good enough? Which platform do I have? Let's tap into the digital platforms that are there. There's lots of platforms that we need to empower ourselves to operate in. Government is rolling out broadband, which tells you that most of the citizens of this country will have access to internet. Let's tap into those platforms, have the licenses in terms of internet broadcasting, so that we're able to showcase our stories and we reach the target wherever he or she is. We do not have to wait for six o'clock that we can be able to tell a story. Okay. I think for, for NAVF, maybe let me start that NAVF is an entity of, of arts and culture. And one of our mandate is to ensure that we've got social cohesion and nation building. And what Nomakab was saying there, with the commissioned films, we're saying we need to ensure that we tell the stories of her, we tell her story. And telling her story, if you look at all the history books, women's stories were left out. And we want to ensure that for us to start building her story, women themselves should tell the story. And we have been going to provinces, rural areas, engaging with school children, for them to, tell, to see the filmmaker from the Eastern Cape, who people will say, more people will be saying that we, we, we more often than not, empower women from Johannesburg and Cape Town. But seeing somebody from the Eastern Cape they now makes them to aspire to become filmmakers. We did the same thing with the Youth Month, where the youth uh, slaves, we went to all the provinces and showing the, the, the young people, the filmmakers who are young like them to say, actually, you also can make a film. With regards to mentorship, NAVF does have three uh, mentorship programs with ANAM. So I think if you get in touch with NAVF, they will be able to assist in all those areas that we've identified. Because I think that is where we are, to, to provide support and mentorship for, filmmake, for women filmmakers, but also female filmmakers broadly in, in the country. Well, thank you, Dr. Maroon. You, you mentioned the, the rural areas thing quite a bit earlier on, and it seems to be coming up that beyond <laughs> the main centers, we need to reach somehow. Yeah, it is, it is important to do that. Mm. Um, um, we at Pencil uh, would, would advise the sisters, particularly um, when it comes to issue of language, mm. ensure that uh, we will sit with them and advise them on the constitutionality of our existence and the constitutionality of the languages and the question of equitability of language use. And then we will emphasize that and advise them on when they structure or script a film, we need to ensure that we balance those. Mm. And as I said, the nuclear of our existence is women and they are expressing the form of language. That is very much important. This is another point that she raised uh, about how do we support each other as women uh, in order to make sure that we advance in our business. The best approach is not to hit against the rock and confront. Women have been given a special gift of talking subtly and transcending situations. If, 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 if you are confrontational, yeah. you might not be successful. Mm. And this is the strategy that we need to adopt. And that's when the sisterly are in the sisterly discussion about the business of yeah. advancing sisters, one aspect of their communication should be how to seed and come up with a strategy to transcend without raising the ire that we are fighting. Right. Because if you fight back, if you fight, somebody will fight back. So the strategy is important. It's not much about the might. It's much about the mind. You're going to get strategy. some pushback from DM here. Yeah. Yeah. 
I disagree with that yeah. approach simply yeah. because yeah. women have been behaving that way mm. and that has not taken them anywhere. Mm. We can no longer be apologetic. Yeah. We've been patient and this time we demand what is rightfully ours as women. The reason why we are saying we should, let's skill them so that we do not give anybody an excuse to say it's because they are not skilled. The reason we are saying let's review the policies if we need to is because we're tired of all the hurdles in the criteria that is being set up by the people. Actually, most of them are men that set up those criteria. We are not blaming men for that. We are saying we have not been exposed, but this time we are going to occupy and reclaim the space that we're supposed to play in. It is women that have been telling stories, the grand women that we had, that has been telling the stories and the history of our children to the future generations. That's why today we're able to tell stories. Men have never been good in it. But like I said, the technical side of it yeah. is what is very crucial. Right. That is why this time we are saying we are going to go for it. Whether you like it or not, the policies will review. We will do what the women of 1956 did. Yeah. Because if they were this patient, then we wouldn't be where we are today. And yeah. we cannot fail that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you know what, I'm going to come to you. I've mm. just got a lot of people that we need to address, mm. but uh, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you Can you stand up? Because I have watched your career, and you have uh, you've performed, you've written, you've done shows, and you produce, and you're a filmmaker. So you, you've journeyed quite a lot. And I would say at a time when there wasn't a lot of help and support, and I just want to get your sense of your journey, uh, where you are now, um, and a lot of it you've had to find your way. How could your journey have been easier? Um, thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to applaud uh, Mem Abatu as well as the DM for just telling us about the interventions mm -hmm. and the unapologetic way in which you're putting women in the forefront. So thank you for that. I am a producer. I'm currently the executive producer of a TV show called Visionaries Lounge on SABC2 every Saturday at 6. I've been a spoken word artist. I've been in the media for 16 years uh, across radio, TV, online, and print. And one of the biggest experiences that I've found that has worked in my favor is people, or let's say is not being afraid to venture out into the media and to do what you've never done before. I did not train as a filmmaker, but I trained in documentary filmmaking when I was doing my honors as a journalist. And what I found is that the industry segments people. If you're a journalist, you stay a journalist. If you're a producer, you have to produce. If you're a poet, you're a poet. But we are creatives. And as creatives, we can share platforms. I can produce with a poet, I can produce with a musician, I can take my skills and tell a documentary on Jessica, who, by the way, I featured on my show, Visionaries Lounge, and many other guests here. So what I want to know from the Deputy Minister specifically, we move and we grow, and I'm in the space of being an entrepreneur now. I own my own production company. What I find is that we are funded project to project as filmmakers but we don't have capacity to scale our businesses as entrepreneurs. What do I mean? I need funding for cameras, for sound, for lights, so that I can shoot in and out of season, whether I'm funded or not. We have Discop that comes to South Africa every year. It is a platform for content buyers and sellers, but it's held in a country where filmmakers don't own content. So as South Africans, we are always on the outskirts of Discop. We can sell content, we can buy content. So us having our own assets in our companies will allow us to actually own our content. Come Discop, we've got a discography to sell. So how do we scale as entrepreneurs, not just film to film to film? Thank you. Okay, so I think both of you can answer that question. Let's start with you, Diem. For that question, actually, if you listen to Usma Bato and mm. what I said earlier on, is that their funding is limited mm. and therefore it limits our potential as women to be the best that we can be. But I said, 
through the presidential task team on creative industries, we are trying to address those. We have all the stakeholders that I'm seated here with. We have arts and culture on board. We have mm. even DTI mm. that were saying, let's review your criterion because it does not assist and we are not achieving what we want to achieve. Mm. Of course, it's going to take a, a long way because we must go to the legislation, change the legislation of which we, we hope that you will be there to engage with it and make sure that all the public hearings are, are clustered by yourselves and your inputs ahead so that when we go back to parliament to make our presentation, we do not have lots of people who oppose. Of course, they are going to be there to oppose, but we've got to tell our story in a clear manner that everybody understands. Even if you want to oppose, you oppose for opportunistic purposes, but of course we can't be derailed because of that. We are working on addressing those challenges. Mm. Scaling up? Scaling up. I think it, it, it really talks, for us it talks to, to funding. Yes, our films that we're finding now, we say you own your content. As you said, once you find you, we say make the 20 films, it's your feeling you own the content. But with the issue of the capital funding, we, we really need to hear more voices from the filmmakers. It, it is not right that as a country, I mean, I said it before, it is not right that as a country, you only get six million when somebody get 100 million, and that is not even a loan. Outside uh, uh, public uh, broadcasters will come, make a film. We say because they made a film in the country, they brought uh, tourism, they brought everything, we give them 100 million. And they're not even giving the money back. So I think for us, we, want, we, we are saying let's change legislation so that we have those companies. So we, as NFVF, we've got a, a three-year funding for companies, for them to be sustainable. And we hope that at the end of the term, we'll have at least 10 or 15 women-owned companies that are sustainable. Now, I, I hear what you're saying in terms of equipment, and we'll ensure that we support and, and, and you in partnerships with IDC, but with other partners. We continue talking to other partners to ensure that we don't apologize with regards to women issues. <laughs> We, don't, we are not apologetic <laughs> at all. We ensure that we, we want to build sustainable women businesses and that, that there's no apology there. Dr. Yeah. Munaring, I mm. think it's time to mm. give you a right of reply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I, I'm, I'm talking strategy. I'm not talking about silencing women. I'm saying this multi, multi, a multi-pronged approach to dealing with matters. Um, I'm saying that when I talk, refer to a sisterly talk, I'm talking about how to subvert the powers. Remember, oppression, operation, op, oppression it's, it's being advanced every day. It's no longer as brutal, as visual, as tangible as possible. It is made subtle. So to deal with a subtle strategy, you need to strategize and work on your strong point. Okay. So to be confrontational all the time as a one-dimensional one, it might not help. Remember, when you go up to the authority, to the big authority of power, the, the, the lines of, 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 of undermining women's mm. progress, it's being refined. The system is intact that you're not going to see that it is advanced, it's not advancing women's cause. So my sense is that when you deal with strategy, mm -hmm. you're going to look at how you do things and it must be multi-pronged. Okay, That's so 20,000 women, 1956, there was nothing subtle about that. Yeah, there was nothing, but it was multi-approach. Uh, some were doing the obvious uh, obvious the one line. and the others were not. Okay, mm. all right. I think you're gonna get feedback on that just now. Mm. But uh, <laughs> non is on table number 10. Let's go to you, non -Flanta. Thank you, Peter. Um, I've got um, probably a question for everyone on the panel. Dr. Monareng, I'm an author of um, six books that I've published when I was 26 years. I'm currently working on my seventh book, with, which I'm publishing in the next two months. How would you and I get into an opportunity where we translate uh, uh, my second book, which I've written? I get the Namshlope on board to interpret the book. We get it on radio stations. That's, that's my one for you. Um, Ms. Ramakoshi, I have, I'm currently working on a book which is going to be a novel. I'm foreseeing it being short, like uh, happiness is a four-letter word, those kind of... How would 
you advise me to go about into ensuring that whilst the book is new, whilst it's launched in October, I already have the right connections into getting it into um, a short film. Ms. Ndabeni? Yeah. What is the relationship that the Department of Communication has with schools? Because I want to get some of my books into the school syllabuses. And I'm currently sitting with Macmillan, who has given me three months, and um, I'm waiting for their, uh, for their response. But that's, that's that for me. Peter, blessed is tired as the SABC for us submitting content after content that doesn't normally get, um, you know, to be sifted through or to be even approved. So this is the only way in which we can do things because I can tell you blessed has got his hands full. We've submitted proposal after proposal. Otherwise, we end up feeling like you guys are preaching to the converted because we come out, you know, inspired, you know, motivated. But then what is the next step? Thank you so okay. much. Okay, you <laughs> okay. All right. I need to just, just deal with those issues one by one because I think a lot of people are feeling that uh, energy. Uh. Yeah. We will um, take the mic. Carry on. Okay. I think we, we would advise the sister there that um, we will uh, direct you to people who are actually doing the translation of work. Um, our mandate is not to translate. Our mandate is to ensure that multilingualism is inculcated within the society. We will be monitoring and evaluating whether that is happening in all sectors of life. So we do know people who do the business. We would have to deal with that uh, to, ass to assist you to make sure that we keep in contact with them. What further we will assist you with is to create, we've got a program that, um, as, as a program that we have just um, birthed, uh, which is called Equitability of Languages, which means that we'll be looking at how you create space for African languages, particularly um, so that they can have a higher percentage incrementally into the business space of, 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 of filmmaking and, 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 and publication. So we will be engaging such kind of adventure to help you to do that. Thank you. Okay. Madam uh, Akoshi. With, with regards to ensuring that your book becomes a documentary, I think you can apply to the NVF, and it's better because now you are the rights owner of, of the book, because more often than not, you find some people wanting to make a film about somebody's books without the, the, the writer's consent. So you can, you can apply to the NVF, and the process will, will be taken from there. Okay, DM. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Mm. I am Mrs. Ndabeni Abrahams. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Mrs. Ndabeni. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, your question mm. as the Department of Communications and what you're trying to achieve in schools is a very important one. But unfortunately, when it comes to schools, the Department of Basic Education is the custodian of the content that the students must be exposed to. So as the Department of Communications, all we do is to refer you to them. Then upon their approval that, yes, the book can be used by the learners, then that's only when we can be able to say, then we will help you in terms of reaching out in the platforms that we encourage our radio stations, our papers, wherever they are, to market your book. But outside that, we cannot go beyond that. But most importantly, as we are saying that you are the right of the book, you want to transfer it to documentary. It's a great platform. But I think also as writers, we have a responsibility. I said we are moving digital. Let's not lose the sight of that. Because not most people read the books. It has been proven. As much as there are those that still read the books, there are those that want to sit on their cell phones and their iPads and access the content that they want to access. Let's make sure that we exploit all these platforms that are there. I check, Peter, when I go to school, you've got to check a journal. It's online. Let's make it a point that we make our money, we exploit those opportunities, because those platforms, they make money for other people, especially those that are outside the country. It is high time that as South Africans, as we spend our money, let's understand the politics and the economics of the internet that we are operating in. I just wanted to okay. say Okay, um, as far as the SABC is concerned, I'm just a cadre deployed by the movement. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, I hope that there is somebody uh, from the SABC here, but I think one of the opportunities that is uh, going to come through, and this is what we've heard uh, from Deputy Minister, is that digital migration is going to produce more platforms. So it's a given that we're going to need content 
uh, for those particular channels that uh, we're creating. But above and beyond that, in the immediate front, um, this increase in local content means we need more content. That's a given. So it may have been a difficult journey so far, and I acknowledge that. I've also sat as a producer, and, and uh, yes, it is a challenge. But I think that the latest move uh, by the public broadcaster to increase local content means we need more local content. I think the challenge is going to be making sure that perhaps that there is a deliberate um, action to make sure that more women producers are put in front of the queue in a lot of the proposals that are made. Uh, is there anybody from the SABC who's, who wants to comment or have I done our corporation justice? Okay, all right, it looks like I'm, I'm okay. All right, okay, and just to also to let it, people know in terms of training, uh, the SABC at the moment right now has deployed a lot of technical people to Swaziland to actually help our brothers and sisters there. They're um, help, helping train and uh, build up the skills there. So that's part of uh, the initiatives that the broadcaster has been doing. Okay, let's get back to the tables, though. Uh, we've heard from Nontlantla. Let's go to Dikaledi, who's on table number 13. Oh, dear. Table 13, Dikaledi. Um, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm so glad it's Women's Month and we're closing the month with Women's Day. Um, my concern has always been skilling, but since it's been addressed, skilling and training, I just want to create awareness to everybody that uh, with skilling and training, we now have an opportunity globally to participate in the World Art Games. So art, it is, uh, uh, we've got different categories. What we've been talking about is just one of the categories of art and um, I think we need to create awareness. I mean, the disciplines, when we talk filming, it's uh, in the World Art Games, if you go to Waka Games, the way we look at the Olympics, they are also an opportunity for us to participate globally. So I'm here to create only awareness as a, a director of Mzansi Youth Leadership to say, we as Mzansi, let us brand ourselves and go out there to the world to show what a beautiful country we have and what we have done as women in South Africa. Thank you so much, everybody. That's about it. <clears throat> Thank you very much indeed. And I guess it's more a comment rather than a question, and uh, so it's something for us to think about. We're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue with the floor. But we'll also look at your questions that you're fielding through Twitter at Morning Life SABC, hashtag TNA Biz Brief are some of the platforms that you can use. We'll see you right after this.